again. President Biden shook hands with air. More on that performance in a minute. But first, our top stories tonight. Bill Gates is generously giving away all his wealth, and we'll tell you to who. A very non-compliant Japanese prime minister has been taken care of. In Canada, Justin Trudeau is improving his reign of terror. The Pelosi's are excelling at insider trading. And Victoria's Secret went woke with feminism, and now they're going broke. Also, we're trying to turn the US into a third world country. We'll tell you how in a moment. But first, America's most trusted physician, who hasn't treated a single patient in decades, Anthony Fauci, has announced he will retire at the end of Biden. Biden's current term, which could be any day now, if you know what I mean. The very trustworthy Fauci has held the position as the director of the NIH since 1984. No coincidence there. But once retired, there is no telling how the gain-of-function department at the Wuhan lab will remain funded. Dr. Fauci's retirement plans include enjoying the rest of his years while sipping drinks on the beach while trying to not get caught for what he's done. And over the weekend, a non-law-abiding gunman opened fire in an Indiana shopping mall, leaving at least three people dead. Luckily, he was stopped by a... Oh, um... Let's leave out this next part about how a good Samaritan with a handgun shot and killed the gunman, preventing more deaths. Because wouldn't we be better off if law-abiding citizens couldn't own guns? In other news, the New World Order's own Bill Gates has announced he will give away virtually all his wealth to his foundation. And because his foundation is owned and controlled by him, he'll be giving away all his wealth to himself. That's how his philanthropy works. Back to Biden. After seeing the president shake hands with air back in April while in North Carolina, many Americans underestimated the president thinking, well, that was a one-time thing and it'll never happen again. But it did, this time on the world stage in Israel. But unfortunately on this occasion, they got him to his seat that he didn't know he was supposed to go to quicker. Which meant other world leaders weren't able to watch him wander around walking in circles for as long. And for those who are so confused that they think Hunter's dad is confused, here's Biden getting off the plane in Israel saying, What am I doing now? And that's a very decisive question showing strong leadership. We also have new reports coming out that during the presidential campaign when Biden wasn't hiding in his basement and was actually showing up for public engagements, he had to be fed pills just to function. Because without them, he was reportedly like a small child. Like a small child? Well, no report yet on whether or not he was sexually aroused by himself. But Hunter lists Joe as Pedo Peter in his phone, so he probably was. And now I will shuffle my papers around even though I am not reading off them. Obedient people in the US, mostly with blue hair, are doing their best to march this country into third world status. Accordingly, just when the naysayers claim the Biden administration hasn't been accomplishing anything, we're proud to tell you they've accomplished a new 40 year high of inflation. 9.1% in June, to be exact. And the good news with this accomplishment is that the money you work hard for is worth almost 10% less, which makes you more dependent on the administration that's working hard to make your money less valuable. Also in June, food prices increased by 10.1%. So while your money is worth almost 10% less, you have to pay 10% more for food. But that shouldn't matter to you, unless you want to eat. But for the few Americans who do want to eat, you don't have to worry, because the nation's largest farmland owner, with over 260,000 acres, will be looking to do with his farmland what he does with his other philanthropy. And in June, fuel prices have... Let's just skip this next part. Insider trading is a crime for thee, but not for me. Accordingly, Speaker of the House and Keeper of the Crypt Nancy Pelosi and her husband, who's a strong DUI advocate, have just bought up to $5 million worth of semiconductor stocks. And coincidentally, that's just ahead of the Congressional House's big vote that targets the industry. And for all the skeptics out there who don't like criminal activity as they look at the insider trading and inappropriately label it insider trading, we'd like to point out on Nancy's behalf that if everyone knows about it, 
Is it really insider trading? And while we cannot and will not give financial advice while we're brainwashing you on this show, given that the Pelosi's just bought a bunch of semiconductor stock in an industry that Nancy helps regulate at the federal level, you might wanna buy some semiconductor stock. Now you might mistakenly be thinking, well, given these hard economic times, I just don't have the money to buy any stocks. Well, don't be stupid, because one of Biden's top advisors says Americans are seeing very strong economic conditions. And in other news, terminal cancer patients are seeing very strong health conditions. Meanwhile, in Canada, the leader of the Freedom Convoy, Tamara Litch, sits in jail without bail while Canada sets a rapist free. As you know, the Freedom Convoy is a dangerous organization that puts Canada at great risk of remaining a democracy, which rivals Castro's son's agenda for the country. We know that, for example, in Russia, when Putin has his political rivals thrown in jail, like Navalny, that is blatant tyrannical activity. And when Justin Trudeau does the same thing, we want you to know he's protecting Canada from his political opposition that believes in nothing but freedom. And luckily here in the US, our president is doing the same thing. And in other news, Trudeau got a haircut and is looking more intelligent than ever. Moving along, Victoria's Secret went woke and now they're going broke as they're laying off 160 management positions. Going into the archives back in 2021, when Victoria's Secret originally announced it was taking their branding woke so it could do even better in business, here's what our mentally ill department reported back then. Leftist agenda. Hello, Victoria's Secret. We've recently succumbed to the pressure of woke culture. So things will be getting a lot better for our brand. Our new lead rep is activist soccer player and member of the gay community, Megan Rapinoe. As a company, we're listening to her for some reason. Rapinoe said at Victoria's Secret, our old approach was patriarchal and sexist, saying that we viewed what was sexy through a male's lens and through what men desire. Because Rapinoe's good at soccer, we've learned using a male's lens is obviously not a wise thing to do when our customer base is predominantly heterosexual women who are buying lingerie to be more desirable. Because suggesting you have to be a woman to wear women's lingerie, it's a harmful message because it discriminates against women who aren't women. Yep, turns out we were right. As Victoria's Secret has let the leading goal scorer of feminism steer their ship right into the rocks, we'd like to do our parts in helping spread the fruits of feminism so other people and companies can have similar benefits. To do that, we've got an exclusive interview with the head of feminism, Jeff Zenisek. Jeff, welcome to the show. Now, is it true that you identify as a man? I do, and I have apologized for that many times in the past, and that's not why I'm here today. Now, Jeff, given that feminism is all about women, and not that we're admitting on air that we know what a woman is, what makes you as a man qualified to be the leader of feminism? Because women before did not have strong leadership, but now they have me, a man, to tell them what to do. Why do you think that is? They tell long stories that kind of take forever. People don't want to listen to it. Their voices are like high and shrill and like kind of grating. But if you have like a bassy, deep voice like a man like me, people are more likely to listen to it. It's more pleasant to hear. Jeff, what about the naysayers who think you lack the diversity to be a leader in the feminist community? To that, I will say I am a member of the LGBTQIA plus community and that I am bisexual. I will have sex with women who are straight and I will also have sex with women who are gay. Very informative. Now, what is the goal of feminism? Feminism is all about teaching women, the more they act like men, the more empowered they are because they're women. So as a woman, you have to act more like a man to be more empowered because being a man is better than being a woman. Now, for those who want to know, how can women get involved in feminism? Uh, hit me up in my DMs. I think it's important for the movement that we put our best face forward. And by that, I mean, we're only looking for women that are sevens or higher. We might accept sixes if I'm really drunk. That's great. Jeff, where can people find you? You can follow me online, Jeff Zenisek. 
on any platform and you can also follow the YouTube channel for my podcast, Two Woke Boys. Jeff, thank you for taking the time to come out of the show and explain to all the women out there what feminism is about. And while we're on the topic, the feminist community couldn't be more proud to learn that a human with a penis has been nominated to receive the NCAA's Woman of the Year Award. Leah Thomas, them there may stand on top of the podium once again above all women. Now we've inquired with the NCAA about why Leah Thomas was never nominated for their Woman of the Year award while them there was competing in the men's division for all those years. But we've yet to receive a response. We'll keep you posted. Objective truth is stupid, isn't it? Oh yeah, and former Prime Minister of Japan Shinzo Abe has been assassinated, and we have no idea why. That's it for tonight's news. The world is collapsing all around you, and we're doing it to you while you think we're on your side. Thank you for your trust. Good night.